Hello, you guys. What is up? Welcome back to another episode of Killer Instinct. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I'm your host of Killer Instinct. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly here on the podcast every single Wednesday and you're not going to want to miss it. We also upload the video version onto YouTube as well on Wednesdays. So make sure you are subscribed. Now, you guys, as you can tell by the title of today's episode. Today, we are talking about the murder of Selena Quintanilla. As I mentioned to you guys last week, we are dedicating March to celebrity cases. If you haven't been keeping up or if this is your first time you're listening, every month we are dedicating it to a new true crime case. So January was unsolved cases, February was killer couples and scorned lovers, and now we are in March and we are doing celebrity cases. And this was one that was extremely requested by you guys and one that I definitely knew that I wanted to cover during this month. So with that being said, let's jump right on into it today. Selena Quintanilla was born on April 16th, 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas to her parents, Abraham and Marcella. Growing up, Selena had two siblings. She had a brother, A.B., and a sister, Suzette. Selena's father, Abraham, was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and her mother, was born in the state of Washington. Now, Abraham was a musician himself and a member of a popular band called Los Dinos, where he played the guitar. And that's actually how Abraham and Marcella met. They met in the late 1950s during one of Abraham's performances that Marcella attended. The two met there and began dating before getting married and having Selena's two older siblings and then ultimately having Selena. Now, being born into a musical family and the family of a musician, having Abraham play the guitar, Selena was constantly surrounded by music. She was surrounded by different instruments, different types of genres. So it's no surprise that she gravitated towards music. From a very young age, Abraham noticed all of his children gravitating towards music and saw their talent from a very young age. And because of this, he really encouraged them to continue to play and sing and explore. And he helped teach them to play instruments. Through doing this, Abraham noticed Selena's natural talent for singing. So together, the family formed a band called Selena y los Dinos. In the band, you had Selena, who was the lead singer, her brother A.B., who was on bass, and Suzette was on the drums. The family would go around to smaller gigs and events throughout Lake Jackson, Texas. They would also go around and perform at different weddings, fairs, local parties in the Houston area, and they became very popular in the local music scene, and they really focused a lot on Texan music, also known as Tejano music. Tejano music is a style of music that blends traditional Mexican music with different styles of pop, country, rock, and other genres to create a unique sound. The lyrics will often center around the themes of culture and heartbreak, love, and daily life. Alongside Selena, other artists that have heavily contributed into this genre include Emilio Bavaria, Los Palominos, and Shelly Lares. Now, while Selena and her siblings were working in the band, Selena was also focusing on school and her education. She attended several different high schools in Texas. She attended three to be exact before transferring to the American School of Correspondence in Chicago, Illinois, and graduating from there in 1989. Throughout this high school, Selena was able to complete her remaining high school requirements online, which really was perfect for her because it allowed her to spend more time focusing on music. She didn't have to worry about physically going into school every day. She was really able to complete everything she needed to do right online. And another reason that they ended up moving around high schools quite a bit was because Selena's family was struggling financially and they really were trying to put everything they could into supporting the band. So the money that they did have was going right back into the band with the hopes of making them as successful as they can be. Now, besides her music, I do want to talk about Selena as a person for a moment. Selena was known to be very bubbly and outgoing. She was always very humble and kind. She took time to interact with her fans and the people that supported her. She was really down to earth and also had an unmatched determination and work ethic. When it comes to her music, she was a perfectionist who wanted to make sure everything was done completely perfect and done to the best of her ability. Whether it was a song, an album, a live performance, she always tried to make sure that everything that she worked on, every project that she worked on 
was perfect. Now, the same year that Selena graduated from high school is when she released her first studio album called Selena. Now, this was significant for many reasons, one of which being this was the first time that Selena was really marking herself as an independent solo artist. As I mentioned, up until this point, it had always been Selena y Los Dinos, but now it was just Selena. But regardless, her family was still very much involved and supported Selena always. Selena's father, Abraham, acted as a manager for Selena. He helped a lot with the business side of things. Her brother still helped with the songwriting and the production of the music. And her sister, Suzette, continued to be the drummer for Selena's band. Selena's mom, Marcella, was also very supportive and there for all of her children, really cheering them on, being their biggest supporter and doing whatever she could to help make sure that they were happy and successful. In 1989, Selena's brother AB had recruited a man named Chris Perez to be the lead guitarist for Selena's band. Now, Chris was an extremely talented guitarist who had played in several rock bands before, and once Chris joined the band, he and Selena quickly formed an attraction to each other. Now, initially, Selena and Chris really had to hide their feelings for each other because Abraham was not having it whatsoever. When Abraham ultimately found out that Chris and Selena were dating, he took Chris off of the band bus and told him that he needed to stop seeing his daughter, and if he didn't, he was going to fire him from the band. Now, ultimately, Selena and Chris continued to see each other and date despite Abraham's disapproval, and that is when Abraham fired Chris from the band. Now, right after this, on April 2nd, 1992, Selena and Chris snuck off and eloped. However, the media actually picked up on this way before before Selena was able to tell her family. So this news was plastered all over the media within hours. And as you can imagine, Abraham did not take this news well at all. He really isolated himself from Selena and from his family for quite some time. Now, Abraham said the reason that he disapproved of Chris was because he believed that Chris was going to make Selena quit music and that the two of them were not going to be able to focus on their careers together and that Chris was ultimately going to break up the band. However, after some time, Abraham finally did apologize to Chris and accepted their marriage, and Chris did get his job back in the band. So now that you have a little bit of the background, I do want to take a moment and shift to another person that comes to play in this case, and that is a woman named Yolanda Saldivar. Yolanda Saldivar was born on September 19th, 1960 in San Antonio, Texas. She was one of seven children and worked as a nurse. She ended up being the first person in her family to receive a college education and completed nursing school. Yolanda was very family oriented. She was the youngest aunt to her nieces and nephews, and they all remember how she was the one that was willing to play with them or if there was something they wanted to do or a new activity they wanted to try out. Yolanda was always the one that would do the those things with them. Now, Yolanda was also a very, very big fan of music and different musicians, and she attended many concerts, one of which was a Selena concert in 1991. Now, after attending this Selena concert in 1991, Yolanda became hyper fixated on Selena. There was this fascination about Selena. There was an obsession about Selena. This wasn't just, you know, someone who was your everyday fan. And so because of this, Yolanda was really doing anything that she could in order to get close to Selena. She wanted to be able to be a part of what Selena was doing. She really believed in Selena. She really loved what she stood for. She loved her music. She was a huge fan and wanted to do whatever she could in order to kind of get in that inner circle. Now, part of this and where this really started was after this first concert when Yolanda began consistently calling Selena's father, Abraham, over and over and over again. Now, ultimately, Abraham did answer the phone and he was able to have a conversation with Yolanda. During this conversation, Yolanda asked Abraham if she could start a fan club 
club for Selena. The idea with this fan club is that Yolanda was going to run it. Yolanda was going to be the president. She was going to be the one in charge of the whole thing. And she just wanted to be able to do something to show her support for Selena. Now, when Abraham heard this, he thought that this was a great idea because for him, no one loses in this situation. Selena gets to be able to connect and interact with her fans more. There's this also a financial component to this. It's a way to kind of boost Selena's image out into the public and getting her name out there more. Not that that wasn't already a thing already and that she needed any help in that, but really being able to give her a chance to connect with her fans more. So Abraham thought that this was a great idea and Yolanda was thrilled. She immediately got started on creating this fan club and automatically named herself as the president of the fan club. She began sending out little Selena fan packages, little letters, little autographed signed things, just Selena memorabilia. That is what was put into these fan packages. The fans would sign up and they would receive these packages. Now, because Yolanda was the president of this fan club, over time, she really started to get closer to Selena's family. She ended up getting close to Selena's sister, Suzette. The two of them would set up different fundraisers and events. And ultimately through that, Yolanda ended up getting close to Selena herself. Now, after Selena and Yolanda had spent quite some time together, Selena actually asked Yolanda if she would be willing to help Selena manage Selena's clothing boutiques. Now, Selena had two boutiques named Selena Etc. that opened in 1994. They were located in Texas and provided clothing and different merchandise inspired by Selena. Now, this was something that Selena was incredibly passionate about. She absolutely loved having these boutiques. Boutiques. It was something that she felt that she could have that was just hers and something that she was very, very proud of. You know, with everything about her music career was very much involving her family. She had her dad, she had her brother, her sisters, and she loved that. But she also loved having this extra thing that was just hers. Now, when Selena asked Yolanda to help with these boutiques, Yolanda was absolutely thrilled. She was incredibly excited to be able to take on another role in Selena's brand and be closer to Selena in this way. So Yolanda was constantly working on these boutiques as well. And Yolanda's family also got involved in the boutiques and with running the fan clubs. Her family would all come over to Yolanda's house and have dinner there, and they would put the fan packages together and work on the clothing boutiques. So it was something that definitely was more of like a family affair with Yolanda's family. Now, according to Yolanda, she claims that the pivot moment in her friendship with Selena was when Yolanda went with Selena to film Selena's music video, Bitty Bitty Bum Bum in Los Angeles. And she claims that that is where the two of them were really able to dive deeper into their friendship and develop something that was beyond a business relationship. They now had a close friendship in Yolanda's mind. The two of them were really able to connect. Now, initially, everything was running smoothly with the boutiques, with the fan club. Everything seemed to be going fine until it didn't. In January of 1995, Abraham began receiving complaints from different members of the fan club who said that they were not getting what they paid for with their membership. Abraham confronted Yolanda about this, considering she was the fan club president, and Yolanda assured Abraham that nothing was wrong and that the people calling complaining were simply just trying to get free product and not to listen to them. However, the phone calls didn't stop and it really got to a point where the fans started to tell Abraham all they wanted was a refund. They didn't want free product. They just wanted to cancel their membership. And that is when Abraham knew that something didn't seem right here because obviously if these fans wanted free product, they wouldn't be asking for a refund. Now, Abraham decided at this point to go through the boutique's finances. Now, again, Yolanda was in charge of managing the boutique and managing the finances. And Abraham claimed that when he went through the boutique's finances, that there were thousands of dollars of checks made out to Yolanda by Yolanda. So Yolanda would write out these checks for herself and sign them for herself. And these checks were for thousands and thousands of dollars. Abraham claimed that in total, he found up to $30,000 worth of forged 
checks. Now, Abraham began telling his family about the things that he found, and he began telling Selena's team, and suspicions kept rising. Now, the only person that really went to Yolanda's defense in this, the person that initially claimed that there has to be a misunderstanding here, because obviously this is a very big betrayal. The one person who was defending Yolanda throughout this was Selena. Selena was the last person who believed that Yolanda was doing this. She thought it had to be a misunderstanding or that something wasn't right, but still the embezzlement continued. Now, this ultimately brings us to March 9th, 1995. Now, on this day, there was an in-person meeting with Abraham, Yolanda, Selena, and Suzette. And this meeting was strictly about the embezzlement claims against Yolanda. During this meeting, Abraham confronted Yolanda about the embezzlement and about the fan club, and Yolanda really didn't have an explanation for Abraham at the time. Now, Yolanda claims that she wasn't in charge of the fan club at that given point, and that she worked for Selena as an employee now, not the president of this fan club. So there are two very differing accounts about how this meeting transpired. According to Selena's family who was in the meeting, this meeting was the first time that it seemed like things were starting to click with Selena and she finally was starting to believe that Yolanda could have been responsible for this. It was like the pieces of the puzzle were coming together, especially because Yolanda really didn't have a lot to say in order to defend herself. There wasn't much that she could say. So that is how Selena's family claims this meeting went. However, Yolanda tells a very different story. According to Yolanda, she said that Selena immediately jumped to her defense. Yolanda claimed that Suzette and Abraham were just yelling and yelling and yelling at her. However, Selena actually got in the middle of her dad and Yolanda and told her dad to let Yolanda speak and to get these answers out. And if that wasn't how this meeting was going to go, that her and Yolanda were going to leave together. Yolanda also claimed that there was never any evidence presented in this meeting that she was stealing or embezzling any money from Selena or any of her brands. She claimed that she asked to see this evidence. However, Abraham never gave it to her. So again, you have two very differing accounts about what happened here. But I think what most people can come to an agreement on in this is that this day, March 9th, 1995, this specific meeting, this really was the domino effect that ultimately led to Selena losing her life. Now, after this meeting on March 9th, it said that Abraham really tried to convince Selena to distance herself from Yolanda. However, Selena wasn't as easily convinced to do this, and that was for several reasons. However, the main one, according to Selena, was because Yolanda held on to a lot of Selena's personal records, financial documents, and so Selena knew that she needed to be able to get those records back before really being able to cut ties with Yolanda. Now, in the days leading up to Selena's murder, Selena had contacted Yolanda asking her for those financial documents. Now, like I said, Yolanda had access to all of these records. She had Selena's bank statements, her bank records, everything that she would need to help file her taxes. So she needed to get these back. And in order to do that, Selena called Yolanda and told her to come to Corpus Christi to hand over these documents. On March 30th, 1995, Yolanda checked in to the Days Inn Motel at approximately 7.30 p.m. at night, and the following morning on March 31st, Selena went over to meet Yolanda. Now, it's not exactly clear who reached out to who, whether that was Selena telling Yolanda that she was going to go meet her that morning, or whether Yolanda called Selena and said that she was already at the motel and to come meet her. However, ultimately, what we do know is that Selena went to the Days Inn Motel that morning and walked into Yolanda's room, room number 158, and then at 11.49 a.m., 911 operators received a phone call from a hotel employee claiming that Selena had been shot. Now, what we know is that Selena walked into room 158, and shortly afterwards, there was a gunshot. Witnesses saw Selena running out of the room, dropping her belongings along the way, and leaving a trail of blood behind her. She was running towards the lobby saying, please help 
help me. I've been shot. The hotel employee claimed that Selena fell to the ground in the lobby of the hotel, and the employee asked Selena who shot her, and that is when Selena identified Yolanda Saldivar in room 158. Witnesses also claimed that they saw Yolanda step out of room 158 while Selena was running toward the lobby and pointed the gun at Selena again before ultimately lowering her arm and yelling out, bitch. Now, police and first responders arrived on the scene and immediately took Selena to the hospital. However, unfortunately, she succumbed to her injuries and passed away. Yolanda was eventually arrested after a nine and a half hour standoff between her and police. Ultimately, Yolanda was taken down to the police station for questioning, and when talking to police, she told them that she had Selena come to the room and that upon her arrival, the two got in a heated argument over the embezzlement claims. In this initial interrogation, Yolanda claimed that Selena told her that she needed to talk to her dad more and that she wasn't sure if this working relationship was going to end up working out, and Selena tried to leave the room multiple times. However, Yolanda kept asking her not to leave and that she didn't want her to go. However, ultimately, Selena walked out of the door, and that is when Yolanda claimed that she pulled the gun out and shot Selena as she was walking out that door. Now, according to police, Yolanda also claimed that she shot Selena in anger. And this was the confession that she signed. Now, since all of this, Yolanda has come forward. And a lot of you guys might've seen this recently. Yolanda put out a documentary on Peacock and it essentially tells Yolanda's side of the story. And there was a lot of backlash with this documentary because a lot of people believe that Yolanda is just trying to paint herself as a victim. So there has been a lot of backlash in this documentary. However, I did watch it. And in this documentary, Yolanda claims that this confession that she initially signed was coerced and she was ultimately forced to sign this confession and really just did it just to get it over with. After Yolanda's arrest, her defense claimed that the shooting was actually accidental and that Yolanda only pulled out the gun to show Selena that she was on the verge of committing suicide and that Selena tried to take the gun from Yolanda and during that struggle, the gun went off ultimately killing Selena. So you have two very different theories here. One theory is that Yolanda shot Selena in cold-blooded murder, and then the other one is that this gun went off in the middle of a struggle. Now, the response to Selena's murder was nothing less than an immense outpour of shock, sadness, anger, and grief from the media and the public. Fans of Selena's mourned her death by holding vigils and memorials and calling to seek justice for Selena. No one could imagine how this could have happened to Selena, let alone by someone who was close to her. You had the leader of her fan club ultimately being the one who took her life. It just was unbelievable. Now, this case ultimately went to trial on October 9th, 1995, and the prosecution said that the whole accidental shooting theory was absolutely ridiculous. They claimed that if this was actually an accident, then Yolanda wouldn't have called Selena a bitch after she shot her, as witnesses say that she did. They also really leaned in to that initial interrogation where Yolanda told police that she shot Selena out of anger and that she signed this confession. That was something that the prosecution leaned into a lot as well. And alongside that, when it comes to this whole theory that Yolanda called Selena a bitch, Yolanda completely denies this and said that that never happened and that neither her nor Selena called anyone a bitch that day. Now, I do want to bring up the purse. This was something that that was talked about in the documentary as well. And I want to just put this out there because I do think that it rattles the narrative a little bit that Yolanda was doing this. The motive for her doing this was because Selena was firing her and that she was being shunned away from the family. So that you do have that theory. And that was one that the prosecution was leaning into. But there was something else that was talked about and that was this purse. So several days after Selena's murder, once the motel room was processed, police went back to collect leftover belongings in the motel, and that is when they discovered Yolanda's purse in the safe. Now, inside of the purse was a bottle of Xanax prescribed to Yolanda, as well as her nursing license, 
and a letter. Now, the letter was actually a resignation letter that was from Yolanda typed up by her attorney on March 13th, 1995, so just several days after that March 9th meeting and weeks before the shooting. Now, in the letter, Yolanda claimed that her reason for resignation was her inability to work around Selena's family on day-to-day tasks. Now, for a lot of people, this letter is where things get confusing because, like I said, the prosecution was pushing this narrative that Selena firing Yolanda was the motive for Yolanda murdering her. But according to Yolanda, she claimed that Selena already received this letter because Yolanda FedExed it to her. Now, the letter itself was not really talked about at all during the trial because the focus of the trial really was just the events surrounding the shooting and the circumstances leading up to it. And a lot of people believe that the letter doesn't really matter because they believe that Yolanda murdered Selena. However you want to spin it, Yolanda murdered Selena. Now, in total, the trial lasted approximately three weeks, ending on October 23rd, 1995. And Yolanda did testify during the trial and claimed that, again, the shooting was accidental and that she did not mean to hurt Selena. Now, ultimately, the jury deliberated for only two hours before reaching a verdict that Yolanda was guilty a first degree murder. During her sentencing, Yolanda was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years, which does mean that Yolanda could be eligible for parole next year in 2025. And that, you guys, is the case of Selena. I am so interested to hear what you have to say about this. If you have watched the documentary, I would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I would just love to know what you think about this case. It obviously was one that completely took over everyone's hearts when this happened. This was something that was so tragic. However you want to look at this, it was an absolute travesty to lose Selena, who was such a light and such a talent at such a young age. And I'm just very curious to see what you have to say about this case. I'm curious about your thoughts about your Londa potentially getting paroled in 2025. Please let me know your comments below. And with that being said, you guys, that is going to be all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Killer Instinct. Again, if you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I'm your host of Killer Instinct. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly here on the podcast every single Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll be back next week with a brand new one for you guys. And until then, stay safe. Bye guys.